we have now made it through all of the women. There's your uh, 12, 12. Yeah, I can do math, right? That was 12 women that we just profiled and ran through. Now it is time to turn our attention to the guys. And same as we did with the ladies, least uh, flagship seasons to most flagship seasons. That is the order we will go in. And it actually works out great because coming off of talking about Veronica, we just mentioned yes. And yes is our first male competitor to discuss here. His OG season Road Rule Semester at Sea, 1999. Challenge debut season three, Challenge 2000. Like I'd said, pretty much just matched up with the early days with Veronica, both coming off Semester at Sea. Last seen on All Stars 1, getting that win. Three flagship seasons to his name. One final one win. That was Challenge 2000. Six daily challenge wins during those three seasons. Never saw an elimination on those seasons. He was all pre-eliminations being a thing. Voting off instead. All-Star Seasons, he did the one, All-Stars won, he made the final, he got the win, took home that money, spent it on a lot of things, helping a lot of people, doing a lot of good out in the world, hats off and golf claps to him for that yet again. What a wonderful human he did so with two daily challenge wins on that season, not seeing an elimination, so another one, get by, get to the final without going in that elimination ring and let his strengths play out, which strengths and weakness-wise, Definitely, he's got the endurance. He proved that during the All-Stars 1. The other thing is just he is a beloved person. He's just such a genuinely awesome person who openly comes into the shows hoping to have a good, you know, life beneficial experience for himself, but also for others, tries to do anything and everything he can for all the other people in the game, in the game and in life. And that very much, you know, sets him up for success in alliances and socially within the house. On the weakness side, it could, you know, as we'd said before with John A, definitely could be looked at as, yes, you already won an All-Stars. You got to get the hell out of here. Also could be looked at as a threat of like, you want All-Stars one on the back of endurance. And if this thing throughout the season does prove to be ramping up the physicality, ramping up, you know, looking a little bit more like the flagship series, they could start to think, yes, is a big threat in a final again. Let's get him on out of here. I skipped over his best performance. In best moment, his best performance is definitely Challenge 2000. His other two flagship seasons, he you know ended up getting voted off very very early, including first on uh, on Battle of the Seasons, which was just a horrible loss for what ended up being a very good season of the show that could have benefited even more from some of the people got eliminated early, getting to stick around. And his best moments probably winning All Stars one easily could be his best performance. Also best moment either one either way you spin it that is what it is. And his my one wish for him is the same as it was for Veronica. I just, for nostalgia purposes um, and hoping that those two are still very good friends, uh, I want to see the two of them paired together. And, you know, at least a daily challenge, maybe not an elimination because that means they might be going home and I don't want to see that, but want to see those two paired together again all of these years later. Letarian is here, three-time all-star Letarian here. OG season, Road Rules, Maximum Velocity Tour back in 2000. Debuted Extreme Challenge season four in 2001. Last seen, obviously, on All-Stars 2, hence the three-time all-star. Full uh, flagship seasons, three of them, one finals that was on Extreme Challenge. No wins on any of those three. 13 daily challenge wins, 0-1 in eliminations back then. Done both All-Star seasons, has not quite made the final in either one. Three daily challenge wins and two and two in eliminations, one and one on both seasons. Both of those wins being in pole wrestling. His best ever performance. With, there's a few things to pick from, a few things to stand out. Maybe this is a little recency bias for me. It's not a recent moment, but for me, having just watched it a few weeks ago, on Extreme Challenge, there's a huge controversy over a paintball mission. They then have to go to court. His team decides. I'm not even, literally, I'm, I, I can't believe I just said that out loud again, but they literally go to court, a celebrity court, um, and uh, they have to plead their case to get the win in the 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 mission that was called off previously, his team decides not to do it. Letarian says, I am doing it. I want to go represent us. I'm just going to roll over and quit. He goes in by far, wins the arguments, has his day in court, but because his whole team doesn't show up, they doesn't get the win, but the judge gives him the gavel. It's this wonderful moment. I think that might've been his best performance. He stays up all night crafting his arguments. It's wonderful. His best ever moment which pole wrestle do you really want to pick of the two all-stars pole wrestles last season versus Tyler, the season before that versus ace. You don't want this guy in a pole wrestle period. You know, everyone could say the Kyle is somehow the pole wrestle King. No, 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 no. 
Letarian is the current reigning pole wrestle king and will be until further notice. Strengths and weaknesses, his strength is his strength. Obviously, again, if you get him in a physical, I get to put my hands on you type of daily or elimination, it's lights out. Letarian's getting that win. He's got the motor. He's got the motivation. And he's also just a great, great teammate. Those are definitely the strengths on the weakness side. You know, uh, he just, he hasn't ever gotten over the hump and there isn't like one weakness to point out to why it hasn't quite happened. A little bit is, especially in these last two all-star seasons, a little bit of he's been willing, you know, on all-stars one, he's like, no one, everyone's trying to get out of going into an elimination with Katie. That's bullshit. I'll do it. And then they, you know, lose. And so literally being a good guy, he worked against him and a little bit of the same last season. And so that I guess could be perceived as a weakness, but really he just hasn't quite gotten over the hump. And maybe this is the season he does it, which my one wish for him, aside from seeing him in another pole wrestle, which I feel bad for whoever it would be against, but it's fantastic television, so let me see it. Um, but my one wish for him is for him to get into that final and get a chance to perform in a final on the challenge, in the modern day challenge, because he is one of those that definitely was just way before his time. If the challenge that we know today would have been the type of game they were playing back in Latarian's heyday, Latarian would have been kicking ass and taking names season after season. So I want to see him in an all stars final. Our returning champion is next. That is MJ OG season, real world Philadelphia back in 2005. Challenge debut on the gauntlet two in 2006. Last seen winning all stars two alongside partner John A. Three seasons of the flagship, one finals and one win. That would be on the gauntlet two. 10 daily challenge wins, two and two in eliminations on the flagship. Has now done that one season. Last season, all stars two. Made the final, got the win. As we said, won one daily challenge along the way and avoided elimination the entire time. His best ever performance. You know, I guess you kind of have to say one of the wins, and you'd probably say the one win that wasn't a team based one. So you'd probably say all stars two, but honestly, his run on Gauntlet 2 and then on Gauntlet 3 coming in as a replacement and the, the kind of the when he came in as a replacement, everyone would be like, oh my God, thank goodness we've got this massive man, this huge athlete, MJ, thank the Lord. That might have been his best moment, honestly, is just his entrance on that season and the reaction of like, thank God we got this guy. Um, but you'd probably have to say, you know, undoubtedly his best performance is either one of the two wins. Strengths and weaknesses, this is a big man, a big former really great athlete that's still a very good athlete to this day great athlete for his age certainly i know recently from following him he had some some surge a surgery of some point i don't know if that was between all-star seasons if that was after i don't remember when filming was and when that maybe was happening but uh here's the hoping it doesn't whatever took place doesn't take place on this season of all-stars uh sorry if, if that ends up being the case and i just unbeknownst came across a spoiler of my own uh i hope i didn't do that but Maybe we did. Who knows? But uh, that's definitely his strength is just his strength, that he is uh, physically very gifted and can compete in pretty much anything you put in front of him physically. Weakness-wise, same thing we said for Yes and John A. He just won last season. It was a bit of a controversial uh, win in two of the or three of the four people that he was in that final versus are on this season. So while I don't think there's any ill will held towards MJ or John A, and it's only held maybe towards the production or the situation, I could see a good chance where Darrell, Nehemiah, and Melinda are like, hey, we like you guys, but we're voting you in every time because we we just feel like we maybe could have got that win last season. So I could see that playing against him. My one wish for him is that he brings the dad jokes. He is uh, seemingly a fantastic father, and his Instagram is full of dad content, and he's got the dad jokes uh all, you know, everywhere you look and he's always been witty and funny in the confessional booth. So give him tons of confessionals, bring the dad jokes, bring the humor. That is my wish for MJ on this season and that he doesn't get hurt. I hope whatever happened was, uh, is, you know, uh, happened off the show and was, you know, as least, uh, impactful as it possibly could be, whatever, whatever it was. The challenge gods have really just given me 
everyone and everything that I'm really wanting in All-Stars because Tyler is back as well. And if you remember back to the All-Stars 2 preview and all of our coverage of that season, Tyler and Tina were the two people I was most excited for coming back into that season. They're both back here for All-Stars 3. Tyler is the next person to discuss OG season, Real World Key West in 2006, challenge debut on The Duel in 2007, last seen last season on All-Stars 2. He did four flagship seasons, made two finals and won both times on Cutthroat and Rivals back-to-back, five Daily Challenge wins to his name, four and two in eliminations. He has done the previous season of All-Stars where he did not make the final, had one Daily Challenge win, but 0-1 in eliminations, losing in that brutal, unbelievable pole wrestle matchup versus Letarian that we previously mentioned. His best ever performance And really, I mean, his best moment, he's got a thousand of them, which is why I love him so much. He's one of my all-time favorite challenge competitors. But performance in moment, I have to give to the Rivals final and really grouping together the final elimination of him in Bananas versus CT and Adam in the, you know, two-way hall brawl of sorts elimination to then make the final. And then he comes down with, it was pneumonia, food poisoning, a bunch of shit at the same time. And then proceeds to be told you probably shouldn't compete. And he says, nah, I'm competing. Does a two day final. One of the first and hardest two day finals we've had and gets the win with bananas and performs unbelievably all the way through. So that's definitely his best performance strengths and weaknesses. He was and potentially still is one of the best athletes on the show. It was always kind of not like he didn't talk about it as much or, you know, bring it up as much, but the swimming background is really, really beneficial in all the random things that they are asked to do on the challenge and always was a huge benefit. He's a bigger, stronger guy. He still seems to have a lot of that in him. So that's a strength. Everyone loves him, which is uh, usually a strength in the house as well. Weakness wise though, there's always been this thing between Key West and Austin, and it's kind of fake, but it's kind of not, um, you know, mostly between Bananas and West, but really between those two seasons of the real world that went back to back and then as they intermixed on the challenge. And so he's here as a solo Key West. There's three real world Austin. That could be to his detriment. We shall see. My one wish for Tyler is admittedly... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he is my number one person I am rooting for to win on the male side, but he might be my number one person I am rooting for to make the final just purely because he's my number one person I'm rooting to be entertained by. So I just want a long season. I want as much of him as possible. I would love to see a Tundra appearance again. I don't feel like we got as much Tundra as we deserve in season one. So I hope there's a bunch of parties at this um, unbelievable challenge house. And I both Tyler and or Tundra are front and center in a lot of them. Nehemiah up next, arguably the face of the Challenge All-Stars through two and now a third season. OG season, Real World Austin 2005, Challenge debut, The Duel 2007, last seen on All-Stars. Two, of course, four flagship seasons to his name, one final where he also got that one win, the Gauntlet 3, seven daily challenge wins, a 21% win rate, three and three in eliminations on the flagship, has now been on both All-Stars season where he made the final in All-Stars 2, did not get the win, Three daily challenge wins, three and one in eliminations on those two seasons. His best ever performance is probably the Gauntlet Three, actually, where he was, uh, you know, pretty much the most dominant on the males on his team, and was really kind of an unsung leader of that team to get all the way to the end and eventually pull off the upset win in that very famous, uh, very very famous and iconic final mission um but arguably as well last season just how much he ran the game ran the one of the major alliances made the final performed incredibly throughout multiple elimination wins you could argue all-stars two is his best ever performance and featured a handful of his best ever moments all of the save the palace content definitely is probably arguably his best ever moments strengths and weaknesses he is a people person through and through and it kind of flipped whereas in his flagship seasons being a part of that real world austin cast again i will say it throughout this preview and throughout the season as we cover it probably there was always this weird thing where everyone hated real world austin cast for some reason or just maybe not hate is the wrong word but went against them in the challenge but it's very much flipped in the world of all-stars where Nehemiah has arguably been the face of the first two seasons. He's seen given the toast at the beginning of last season. He's leading one of the biggest alliances. Everyone's liking him, vibing with him, the whole thing. So feels like he flipped something that used to be a weakness into a strength, um, on the, and also then we saw all throughout last season, 
damn good shape, is definitely working his ass off to be ready to get a W here on All-Stars. So that's certainly a strength is always a strength in this show. When you got it, he's definitely got plenty of that and a motor to keep him going through all the endurance portions. On the weakness side, again, the double-edged sword of, so do people like Real World Austin now? Do they like Nehemiah enough so much that now that Wes is there, the Wes of it all, is that going to cause problems for Nehemiah? Those two are seemingly you know, best buds in real life. They live in the same town. They work together a lot outside the show. They're great, great friends still to this day. So is Wes coming back in going to either help a Nehemiah in a Melinda and bring the trio of all Austin folks bring him into the, you know, what's carries over the Save the Palance Alliance, or is it going to work against him? Who knows? But my one wish for him is that regardless of having his, you know, real good buddy Wes back in the fold, that Nehemiah gets to continue his kind of run as a leader of people on this show and that it does not become the Wes taking over the, you know, the Austin Alliance or Wes totally overshadowing in any way. I want to see Save the Palace continue. I want to see Nehemiah continue to thrive on this show. That is my definite wish for him this season. A true OG next, that would be Cyrus, real world Boston alum back in 1997, debuted on season four Extreme Challenge, kind of season two of the show, really. Um, when he made a, a brief debut, getting the all-time cameo, getting to referee the game versus Reggie Miller and Kobe Bryant. So on season two, he makes his first challenge appearance, but his challenge debut as a competitor season four extreme challenge. Last seen on All-Stars 1. He did five flagship seasons, made one final, got the win in that season. That would be extreme challenge. 26 daily wins to his credit, two and two in eliminations. He has been on the All-Stars the one time, first season, one daily challenge win, did not make a final or win and was eliminated from that best performance ever from Cyrus. You know, it would, it's hard not to say the one season where he was a part of the winning team back on extreme challenge. Uh, I in particular remember a, a, one of my weirdly favorite and I say weirdly cause it was such a, just kind of an odd uh, elimination, but him versus Adam King on the ruins where they played this uh, elimination round where they had like a triangle that they had to turn to direct water want towards their bucket or towards their opponents. And it was just a really interesting and cool elimination that is always top of mind for me. So that was a great moment for him. He's had many, many over the years, usually involving him saying something funny, telling it like it is. He's got a great new podcast called Explicitive Happens, aka Shit Happens, that you should go check out. It's got its own Instagram page. It's linked on all of his social profiles. Check that out, which leads me to strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you know, he's definitely the other thing you should check out on Instagram is this is a man on a freaking mission. He has been over the last, I don't know how many months, if not year, two years on an incredible fitness journey. He is shredded up right now. And I think we're, this was filmed kind of in the middle of all this happening. So he's going to be looking good being a fierce competitor on this season. But even now, they put him on All-Stars 4. This man's going to wipe the floor with some people. He is absolutely putting in the work. It is super motivational. You should check it all out. I personally have been very, very motivated by how just unbelievable of a transformation he has undergone in recent months and years. And so he's got the physical abilities. He's got strong social ties to some of the other real OGs in the house. On the weakness side, we you know will see if occasionally he can butt heads with someone. If someone says something he doesn't like, he's never going to hold his tongue. He's going to tell it like it is. He's going to tell it like he sees it. That could draw him into being, you know, a target for someone else. It has in the past. Maybe it will again. My one wish for him though, is even if it turn would turn out to be detrimental to his game, I love seeing Cyrus in a verbal altercation. I just got to say it. I love seeing him hear some bullshit and call out that bullshit it's great. It's what makes his new podcast very good. It's what makes him great on this show. So here's the hope and someone spouts some bullshit somewhere in his vicinity and he can lay down the truth. And overall, uh, let's, let's see some of that. Maybe they bring some of that Instagram workout content into the world of the challenge. And we get to see a few months back what that transformation process has been like hats off to him again, looking forward to Cyrus on all stars three. 
The Godfather is here. Executive producer himself, Mark Long, jumping back into the competitor side of things again here on All Stars 3. Obviously, the OG season, the truest of OG seasons. Road Rules First Adventure, 1995, 27 years ago. Challenge debut season 2, aka season 1 of the Challenge Real World Road Rules Challenge, 1999. Last seen on All Stars 1. Last seen all over the television screens right now with uh, celebrity, worst cooks, celebrity. That so 90s edition just debut and check that out. He has been fantastic in the first episode of that, and he's got other shows in the works. He's got all kinds of production in the works. He is the creator of All Stars for all intensive purposes, the creator of the We Want OGs movement, puts this whole thing together. He is the executive producer. We owe so much to him for this show being on our screens. His flagship season stats, six seasons, four finals, Two wins on season two, Real World Rotors Challenge and Battle of the Sexes. The other two that he made a final but didn't get a win was Gauntlet 2 and Duel 2. Daily Challenge wins, 33% win rate, 0-1 in eliminations in his career on the flagship. His one season of All-Stars, season one, he did make the final. He did not get the win. He won two daily challenges, though, and an elimination. So that was big to get that elimination add to his resume. We should also mention he's hosted a season. He has hosted multiple reunions of seasons. He is the godfather of the challenge and reality television. His best ever performance, while it wasn't his win, from a challenge perspective, a more modern challenge perspective, the Duel 2, his performance on that season is absolutely fantastic and his best performance for sure as far as how he did as an individual performer and competitor in the game. But you could arguably say his best performance is literally creating All-Stars. That's that's pretty big time. Uh, best moment, creating We Want OGs again. All right, I'll get off of that. But he's had a hand, he's had so many over the years. Again, he's not called the Godfather for nothing. Too many moments to pick from. Mostly, I just can't wait for him to introduce himself and give the classic, you know, height, weight, twisted steel, all the measurements. Can't wait to hear it. Look forward to it every single season. Strengths and weaknesses is that he is an absolute beast of a man. Big, strong, big time guy. If he gets to put his hands on you, if strength is involved, if, you know, if heart is involved, this guy is going to be able to bring it. Weaknesses. Strength and weakness, double-edged here. Certainly was a strength on All-Stars 1. It definitely looked like not only what she has done in all his entire time on the challenge, in the challenge world, he's always been looked to as that leader of the group. Even back on season two, Real World Road Rules Challenge, he was the one that was always the like group leader that would introduce himself to the new mayor every single mission and would like be the one asking the questions and explaining everything. He was just kind of the group leader. And now, obviously, he created All-Stars, essentially. And so on that first season of All-Stars, he was very clearly looked at as like, we can't go after Mark. Like, we're all here because of him. Like, we kind of owe him a little, which maybe that still exists. Maybe that is still, uh, you know, a strength for him. Or maybe it flips and it turns into a weakness where everyone says, hey, you, you, you're an executive producer. You're getting tons of value out of this show already. You can get out of here. You don't need to be competing anymore. And, or it would be legendary to take out the Godfather. That can definitely work against him. My one wish for him is this, that he has a damn good time competing because as much as he's doing big, big things behind the camera, behind the scenes, I want to keep seeing him on the camera, on my screen as well. And he is my number one draft pick that has to be involved if all of us fans ever get our fever dream wish in season 40 of the flagship is some amalgamation, some combination of all stars flagship all joined together. I want to see if there's any long-term true OG of the show. I want to see go back and play with the kids on the flagship it is if Mark Long would be do, willing to do that one single time. So I want him to have so much fun competing on this show that he decides, you know what, I'll do it. If they get to a season 40, I'll go back. I'll play against the kids half my age, third my age. I don't care. I'll still come in twisted still. I'll still tear shit up. That's what I wish for from The Godfather this season. I am thrilled to be saying that the next person we are going to talk about is Jordan. I cannot believe Jordan is here on All Stars, but I am so glad that he is. OG season Real World Portland 2013, challenge debut on 20, excuse me, season 24, Rivals 2, 
2013 as well. Last seen on Total Madness, season 35. He has done six flagship seasons, made four finals, won three times in those six seasons. Battle the Axis 2, Dirty 30, War of the Worlds 2, made the finals in Rivals 2, but did not quite get the win. Daily Challenge wins 22 of them for a 39% win rate and should be said that is without you know, very few team wins in there. That's individuals and pairs. He is a dominant player. He is eight and two in eliminations in his career. Again, dominant, dominant player. Three wins in six seasons. You can tell by now I am a big, big, big fan of Jordan. Has not done All-Stars before. He's an All-Stars rookie. His best ever performance, it's tough to pick because they've all been so good. Um, on a recent podcast with the Challenge Fandom podcast where we rated the best single seasons ever done in Challenge history. Spoiler, you should go listen to that. And if you don't follow or check out all the content Challenge Fandom is putting out, please go do that. Unbelievable work over there. Unbelievable content every single day on their Instagram. Their podcast is great. The Facebook group is great. All of it's great. But on that podcast with them, I did come to the conclusion that Jordan's season of War of the Worlds 2 is the hands-down most impressive season in the history of the show. That's obviously then his best performance, but arguably Dirty 30. Um, winning the final on a basically a broken leg after the the uh, they opened the final with the uh, skydiving in and his you know trainer or whatever crash lands them and he fucks up his leg and still wins the final on it. You could pick either one. You could pick anything he's ever done on this show. It's very, very great. Best moment ever. You know, any of the wins, but also even in losses, he's had amazing moments. He has the iconic on free agents calling out bananas, flipping over all the kill cards, losing in the elimination, but fantastic television for all of us. Strengths and weaknesses, strengths. He is the best athlete on this show, period, full stop. He is probably the best athlete in the history of this show, period, full stop. I don't think it's that much of a debate, honestly, and especially coming into this particular season where he is nowadays, current day, you know, post when this season filmed, he is over in Ukraine doing truly unbelievable work, uh, basically joining and, and or starting up a nonprofit. He's been there for basically the, since the war broke out in Ukraine. He has been there on front lines trying to help and get resources to the people who need it most. Go check out his page on Instagram to learn more about that, how you can help, how you can donate. But prior to doing that unbelievable humanitarian effort, prior to when this season actually was filmed and took place, the last couple of years of Jordan's life, he has been a going from a great athlete to an actual like true competitive great athlete running triathlons and the like his endurance is on a whole different level than any of these other people in this house so if he makes the final it will not be close it just will not be they are going to have to eliminate him prior to the final or he will win no matter what because he will run swim kayak any of the endurance parts so much faster than everyone else that it doesn't matter if he maxes out his time on puzzles and shit which he won't um but just no chance. So that's his strength, that if he makes the final, he will win. Just hands down, that's what's going to happen. His weakness, he can be a bit of a dick. He would admit that himself. He definitely has you know, ruffled feathers on every season he's ever been on with someone, if not multiple someones. He definitely comes into this season. I'm interested to see him and Wes together on the season. Last season, the total madness, they were kind of at each other's throats, and Wes was the reason he got sent off. Should be said, just to keep giving Jordan more and more flowers, eight and two in eliminations, and one of those eliminations losses is in pole wrestle to Fessy. Not the most uh, fair for a guy who had a bum shoulder at the time in pole wrestle, not a game that's very advantageous to someone who only has one hand so you could almost even remove that one but he applauded the decision to put him in in an obviously shit situation for him so him and west wonder how that'll go but my one wish for jordan on this season is i will come out and say it i want to see him win i want him to because i want him to continue to cement the legacy that i think he has is arguably the best to have ever done it he doesn't quite have the accounting stats to catch up to a bananas or ct by have just not having done enough seasons um but three out of six four out of six finals the best athlete the show's ever seen, one of the best entertainers the show's ever seen. Love him or hate him, he's fantastic television. My wish for Jordan is that he wins this season of All-Stars. 
Darrell up next, the OG GOAT, the first ever GOAT, the 4x4 champion who then went on to do five more seasons, but still can be remembered as the original 4x4 champion. Debuted on Road Rules Campus Crawl 2002, then the Gauntlet Season 7, last seen on All Stars 2. He is another one of the three-time All Stars now. Nine flagship seasons, four finals, four wins. Gauntlet Inferno, Inferno 2, Fresh Meat, his first four seasons of the show. Should have had a fifth win in five tries on the Ruins when he he, you know, ends up punching out, knocking out Brad, um, getting kicked off the show. Otherwise, would have been a part of that dominant winning team. 39 daily challenge wins, six and four in eliminations, two all star seasons, made the finals in both times, and but not has not gotten the win. Four daily challenge wins, one and own in eliminations on all stars. His best ever performance. It's kind of hard to pick between the four wins, but probably got to be fresh meat where it was the first one. It wasn't a team. It was a pair. And winning that season is, you know, kind of cemented that it wasn't just being a part of good teams, but it was also being one of the best players on all those very good teams. Um, That's definitely his best performance. You know, most memorable moment might unfortunately be him knocking out Brad, uh, but um, his best moment is any of the wins over the season, any pick a confessional. He's always been hilarious and good and witty in the confessional booth. Um, you know, him doing a tangram puzzle and calling it tangerine, uh, anything like that. All of it's great. Darrell's great strengths and weaknesses. He is definitely one of the best athletes in the, in the show, even at a more advanced age compared to some of the newer, younger competitors coming into the all-star world. He, you know, just having opened a gym. If you're out living out in the Sacramento area, go check out his new gym. He has been getting in fierce shape yet again, a la similar to how Cyrus really getting after it and kind of being back on this show. I think has got spurred him to be like, I don't want to just be good in good shape for my, you know, my age or whatever. I want to be in fucking great shape for anyone anywhere. So, uh, we will probably see that weakness wise is really it's not an actual weakness of his but just kind of the the shines kind of off of Darrell at this point you know he was that four by four champ he's always regarded this guy but then he's done a couple recent seasons of the flagship he's been on both all-star seasons made the final not able to get the win and so kind of the shines just a little gone and the intimidation factor that used to be there is a little bit gone it seems potentially with him and so especially with you know, uh, you know, a Brad and a Mark being in the shape they're in and a Derek and a Wes and a Jordan coming in as a little bit younger versions that are also in killer shape. He's, you know, not really a weakness of his own, but just by proxy of where he was in the standing in the stature in any season he walked in, he's no longer in that place necessarily walking into this season, which means instead in seasons past, He's been avoided as a target because of a little bit of a fear factor. That seems to be gone. My one wish for him is that he can get that back. Um, you know, I would love to see him win a couple individual daily challenges. I'd love to see him go into elimination and absolutely whoop some ass and get some of that gravitas back to him. That is my definite wish for Darrell on this season of All Stars 3. Derek is up next. Road Rules Extreme debut back in 2004. Battle of the Sexes 2 challenge debut in 2005. Last seen on All-Stars 2, another three-time All-Star. All-Star-er? Yeah, that's a word. I just made it up. That's a word. Fair enough. Ten seasons of the flagship. Five finals. Inferno 2 and Dirty 30 made but did not win. Three times he took home the win. A personal three-peat on Inferno 3, Island, and Ruins. 42 daily challenge wins to his name. Nine and five in eliminations. Make that ten and five when you throw in that mercenary win versus Joss. Two all-star seasons. Made the finals in the first one. Did not in the second one. Three daily challenge wins. 0-1 in eliminations. Losing to Brad on last season by a hair and a very good elimination round. His best ever performance is definitely, even though uh, he did not win uh, on this season or even make the final, the gauntlet to becoming the team captain early on, going through a bunch of eliminations and a bunch of memorable ones. That certainly is way, way up there as far as his performances go. And then obviously the three seasons he won, he had great, great performances on best moment. There's a ton of them, but how can you not say coming in and beating Joss on vendettas as a mercenary, maybe the greatest elimination in the history of the show, certainly in recent years of the show, without a doubt gets me off. I've watched it 37 times is my best guess. How many times I've watched all the way through that elimination. Every single time I end up standing up and on the edge, just on the edge of my nerves, watching it and so thrilled by it. 
He's also in a loss, had the iconic pole wrestle versus West. That would be pretty interesting to see him and Wes go at it in a pole wrestle. In fact, I'm just going to skip ahead right to my one wish. I want to see Derek and Wes do a pole wrestle for old time's sake to relive that iconic moment from the duel. That would be incredible. And just to see Derek in a pole wrestle ring, that would be amazing. Strengths and weaknesses. He's got the heart. He's the little pit ball, the pit bull, the bulldog, whatever you want to call it. This man is a problem when he gets to get in the ring and get physical with you. Weakness is he definitely the puzzles and the math uh leave him a little bit you know wanting for a good partner or a good team around him but if he's got that then kick ass he's he can go all the way he can get all the way and get you a win definitely also I would say has as good a relationships in the house as anyone by product of his fantastic podcast challenge mania along with Scott Yeager Obviously, you know, that has kept him very in the world of the challenge. He, along with Mark, are kind of, you know, in season one, were looked at as like, you know, you're the you're the people that kind of run the challenge world a little bit. You've got all this power, not in the specific game, but in the world of the challenge and, and all this. You're doing all the events. You're inviting us to them, this, that, and the other. So that, I would think, gives him a leg up socially and politically. It certainly did on the first season. It didn't work as well on the second season. We'll see if he can use it to his advantage. But again, my one wish... Let's see, let's see Derek in a pole wrestle for old time's sake. And if possible, let's see it versus West to really bring back those dual memories. That would be what I want to see from him. Then we've got Brad. Brad, Real World San Diego 2004, Challenge Debut Ballot Sexes 2 in 2005. Last seen on All Stars 2, coming up just short of the final 10 flagship seasons, four finals, dual gauntlet three, dual two. He did not win cutthroat. He did get the final win. 42 daily challenge wins to his uh, resume, six and six in eliminations, including some iconic wins of those six wins. One All Star season last season. Did not quite make the final or win. Three daily challenge wins, one and one in elimination, beating Derek, but losing along with Jody to Darrell and Janelle in the final elimination before the final. Obviously, uh, coming out of last season, some controversy surrounding the final daily challenge they were a part of. Um, More on that in a moment. His best ever performance Probably, even though he didn't win like he did on Cutthroat, Duel 2 is probably his best performance, if not Duel 1. Either one of those you could take. Uh, very near wins in both of them in iconic elimination victories for different reasons in both. Speaking of, his best ever moment has to be beating Landon. The only person to ever beat Landon at anything, literally. Uh, you know, obviously, Landon didn't win 100% of his daily challenges ever, but he won a hell of a lot of them. But the only person who ever beat Landon in an elimination or a final is Brad on Duel 2 and was a part of getting Landon into that and being willing to take on Landon in that last elimination. That was definitely his best performance moment. Everything, strengths and weaknesses, strengths. He is a great athlete. He's kept himself in fantastic strength, uh, shape. He is a very, very strong guy. And he's got the motor. He's got the endurance. Got all all of that weakness side is his aggression can get the best of him at times. And again, that while controversial and maybe they didn't get given clear rules on that last daily challenge, his, you know, just deciding to use the strength only and not being willing to use his brain cost them the daily challenge, ended up in elimination, got them eliminated. So that definitely can play against him. But I will say for my wish for Brad, which doubles as my wish I should have said or brought up for both Nehemiah, Melinda, and Darrell. I kind of referenced it, but all all four of them are returning after a season where you know production really seemed to have some issues um, of creating a proper, totally balanced or straightforward game in the end of last season in the final. So for all of them, Darrell. Nehemiah, Melinda, and Brad, who maybe were on the you know disadvantageous side of that, as well as even MJ and John A, who even though they won, had to be a part of this complete clusterfuck of a situation. All of them. I just want things to be straightforward, to feel fair, and to get a complete and fair shake of it. And I want Brad to. I want to see Brad get physical. I want to see you know the mud rest, mud wrestling that we got a clip of in the in the. Um, trailer. That's the type of stuff I want to see Brad doing. I'm glad we're going to get to at least see a little of it. Here's the hope and we get to see a whole heck of a lot of it. And then there was one. The final contestant to discuss is one Wes Bergman. Real world Austin fame back in 2005 debuted on the challenge on Fresh Meat season 12. 
last seen season 36, double agents back in 2021. 14 flagship seasons, five finals to his name. Fresh Meat Rivals and War of the Worlds 1 made the final, did not win. Duel and Rivals 2, where he got his two victories. 23 daily challenge wins to his name. 14 and 9 in eliminations. The most eliminations ever, the most wins ever. And is a rookie to this All-Stars world and is coming in hot. Or as he would say, bring in the lava in every single possible way. Best performance for Wes. Difficult to say because part of me wants to say War of the Worlds won, even though he didn't end up winning, but just the hardest final ever, kind of grooming a few new players and teaching them his ways during that season, really dominating that game socially and politically. But you could say, I mean, he won the duel. He had the iconic victory over Derek that we talked about in the pole wrestle. He won Rivals 2 with CT. A lot, lot to pick up from a best performance, a best moment with West. There's been a lot of them over the 14 season run. Strengths and weaknesses, strengths. He would like to tell you that all of them, every single possible thing is his strength, every single aspect of the game. And honestly, it'd be hard to tell you that uh, it's not, um, but I would say his weakness is <laughs> the overconfidence, real or put on, regardless. It definitely works against him. And definitely from the trailer and from what he's putting out on his Instagram personally, he's coming into this one confident. He thinks he's going to win this thing. No problem. That obviously isn't necessarily the best place to be, but, or it could be the best place to be. Who knows? Maybe it works to his advantage, but his strengths are pretty much all of them. He's in unbelievable shape um, right now. He is, you know, regained his, if he ever even lost it, which I don't know he ever really did, but he is jacked up, ready to go. Fierce competitor, obviously loves the political, social, manipulative game of the challenge more than anyone else maybe in the history of the show. He's got that going for him. My one wish for Wes is that Wes gets to pull the one, if not more, but at least one real, genuine, awesome move that he can brag about for the entire offseason going on and that he gets tons of wonderful, great insights, similar to what I said about Jemmy and should have even said about Derek. He's got an unbelievably kick-ass Patreon as well, putting out all kinds of great content on there. Hopefully he gets lots of inside stuff and is able to share that on his Patreon as we watch the season. But my wish for him is just that he gets to pull some of the moves. He gets to relive and uh, go back through the part of the challenge he loves, which is the political side, the manipulating side, the scheming side. I hope he gets every opportunity to do all the scheming. Wes is back. I We're all better for it. I can't believe it. I am so excited for it. There will be more on him in a moment. But that is our final cast profile. You stuck through all of them. That's 24 people. We tried to go as quick as we can. Something on all of them. Now... We move on to the final phase of this preview palooza, if you will, and that is we're going to talk about some expectations for the season, some hopes for the season, and some questions we have going in, and we're going to do so through three different lenses, politically, socially, and competitively. So let's move into that and gear up to talk expectations, hopes, and questions. 